Hey guys, Jordy here from CineCam.net and welcome back to YouTube's greatest series, Copycat Friday. The show where we try to recreate visual effects from famous movies and music videos and show you guys how it's done. And today I'm wearing my 70s outfit because we're going to recreate the upside down world from Stranger Things. And we're going to do this inside Adobe After Effects and Unreal Engine, so it's going to be a super exciting episode. Now big thanks to Holy Land for sponsoring today's video. I actually have a very special message from them by the end of the video, so definitely make sure to stick around. Let's do this! After our previous video, we got really excited about Unreal Engine. So we thought to ourselves, how can we use Unreal again to make a cool copycat effect? But luckily, Stranger Things just released a sneak peek for their up and coming season four, which gave us the idea to create a cool, realistic upside down effect in Unreal Engine. Now, before we can start anything, we need to build our two worlds and we need the assets for those two worlds. So believe it or not guys, but everything we are going to use in this project is absolutely free. So if you want, you can exactly recreate the entire project we are going to make. When using Unreal Engine, you have unlimited access to Quixel Mega Scans. And this is a huge library full with 3D assets, textures, and so much more. And with these tools, I could easily create a realistic hospital hallway in no time. Now, of course, for the effect, we need two worlds. That's three. Where did you learn to count? Two worlds, one clean one, one dirty one, which is the upside down. So first to start, I created the clean world and made a rough outline of the scene. And then, then the detailing can start, creating the look and feel of Stranger Things. But while I'm doing the detailing, Lorenzo can use this rough outline I just created to start the preparations for the virtual production. I think I need your help, Timo. Look at all my games, Timo. Which one do you want to play? <laughs> Where do you even find the time, Lorenzo? A bit. <laughs> well, it is lunchtime, so. Okay, so now that the camera is set up, it's time to attach the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. The red one is a transmitter and the blue one is a receiver. And this way we can send the signal of the red camera to Unreal Engine. There we'll be doing the live compositing and send that signal again back to the camera on a second screen. When you're working with so many devices, you always need to think in advance how you're gonna connect everything. So I just had a better idea of switching these two because the other monitor will be sitting here and otherwise this cable goes here and this goes here. So you get the point. And now I'm attaching the corresponding transmitter and receiver of the other devices to the computer. Now for the receiver of the camera, we need to use this cam link right here. What this does is change the HDMI input to USB 3.0 input. So before we can pull a live green screen, we'll need to install a plugin. In Unreal Engine, open up the edit menu and choose plugins. Look for the composure and install it. Then open up the composure compositing window, which you can find in the window menu under virtual production. In that window, right click and create a new comp. Here we'll be adding the camera input and the virtual camera input. First, let's start with the virtual camera. Go over to create and create a cine camera actor and position it however you want. Next, go over to the composure compositing window. Right click on the comp we made earlier and add a layer element. Here we'll be choosing CG layer and it will automatically select the camera we just made. Now it's time to add the real life camera. Right click in the content browser, go to media and choose media player. It will ask you to create an additional asset, so click the box and press ok. We named it camera input. Next up, double click on the camera input, go over to the folder icon, video and choose your input. In our case is the cam link 4k. And there you go, now you can see the footage of our camera which is getting transmitted via the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. Save this and really important is not to close this tab. If you do that, you'll need to select your input again, so keep that in mind. Then go back to the composer your compositing window to create a new layer and this time choose media plate. Now go to the details window, input, inputs, media source and drag the camera input video into the media source. And of course with every green key you'll need to key it out so scroll down to the track 
transform, transform passes, chroma keying, key colors. Here you'll want to click on the little plus icon. Now a new layer should pop up and here click on the cross icon. And this will allow you to choose a color to key out. If the key isn't good enough you can always adjust the settings in the material parameters but for us this is good enough since we won't be recording the output of this. This is more to give us a reference while filming. And now you're probably thinking damn that was a lot of work. And that's true. But there's one more step. Select your comp and go over to transform, transform passes and click the plus icon. Click on the drop down and create a new material. Open this material and now we'll need to combine the layers we need. So right click and look for texture sample parameter 2D. Create two of these and name them the same as the layers in the comp. To combine those right click and create an overnote. Then we'll attach the RGBA from the texture samples to A and B of the over. And the output of the over goes into the emissive color of the comp material. And when you save that everything should be working perfectly. And now that your green key is working you can simply go over to composure and select that com press p and drag over that screen to your second monitor and as you can see you get your output right on the second monitor of your camera and that all because of the mars 400s pro and these actually are very affordable you have an hdmi input and output or an sdi if you prefer to power these you can just attach a battery or if you want you can connect them to your outlet setting them up is extremely easy you just turn them on and with their smart pairing they will do all the work for you these can go up to 400 feet which is quite amazing and have a really low latency and we can go into the scene mode settings and choose speed mode because we don't need good quality with these we need the lowest latency possible and if you're finding some interference you have an option to just simply change the channels now if you want more information click the first link in the description down below and now it's time to attach the tracker to the camera <laughs> at the office here we have the valve index and because of that we can use these five trackers right here to attach to the camera to determine the position of the camera at all time. Now, if you don't have a VR, you can always use the app of Unreal itself. You can simply download it from the app store. It's completely for free and it basically does the same thing as this thing right here. Okay, while Lorenzo is doing the tracking for our virtual production, let me show you the two worlds we just finished. Now, of course, with all the free assets at our disposal, it was super easy to create our two worlds. First, like I said, we created a rough outline placing all the walls and creating our hallway. Then we started with texturing the walls, the ceiling, the roof, making it look realistic. And then it was just adding some props and some lighting, making it all come together. But now you're probably wondering why all these boxes in the foreground? What's in the well, this is actually a sheet because we want to hide some stuff. First, we want to hide the break line of the green screen and second, we want to hide the contact of the feet of our talents. So if we have some little shifting on the floor later on, we could easily hide that behind the boxes. Then the clean world is done and now we can start with the upside down. And this is actually a duplicate of the clean world and we made everything dirty. First, we adjusted the textures of the floor, the ceiling, the wall, and then we added a lot of vinyl against those walls and added weeds on the floor. Next I started to add some debris, some boxes, some smudges on the wall, just enough elements to get the feeling of the upside down. And last but not least we can't forget the floating dust which is typical for the upside down. And that's it! Two Stranger Things worlds created without ease. To be able to track we first need to install the LiveLink and the LiveLink XR plugin. Next to this also make sure SteamVR is installed. Now go to the window menu and choose LiveLink. Here we'll be adding our source via LiveLink XR. Then create a blueprint in the content browser by right clicking in it. Here add a new component called LiveLink Component Controller. With that selected go to the detail window and choose the tracker you want. Now let's create a plane in the scene and set the blueprint of the tracker as a child. Then also make our camera a child of that tracker. And if everything went well, you should be able to control the virtual camera. We added a plane so you can move the tracker around and reposition your camera in the scene however you want, which will make your life way easier when recording. Now, one of the great things about Holy Land is that not only they send their video signal to the receiver end, but you can also connect with the app to that video transmission, allowing you to monitor while you are working so we can set up the lights and everything and see in real time how the light is changing. 
And because we've got this linked to the Unreal Engine, we can see the virtual sets right here, as well as me being live keyed out, which is just amazing. And in the app, we also have a bunch of controls to not only like monitor, but also to measure the light, such as we've got a waveform right here, we've got histograms, we also get focus peaking, zebra, even felt color and everything, which is really great while setting up these lights. What do you think of my suit, guys? This is actually my father's suit. He actually weared it in public when he was my age. He actually did that. And I'm wearing it for tens of thousands of people to see. Damn it. Camera loped. Camera loped. Okay, guys, we shot everything. Or better, we just shot our green screen shot and Unreal Engine has our camera movement data. But this data we can now use to render out our two worlds, giving us three shots in total. The green screen shot, the clean world, and the upside down. However, to make it ourselves easier, we're gonna render the Unreal world two times, with and without foreground elements. This way we can composite everything with more control over the scene. Now to start, first place the clean hallway and the upside down clip without any foreground elements in a new composition. On top of that, place a talent clip and then both the foreground hallway clips. Now it's time to sync the 5 clips. We gave ourselves a reference point by hitting the camera in the beginning of our recording. On this point we can easily sync everything with the reference bump of all the clips. Then next we are going to shorten the clip so that we only have the dolly movement and no more excess bleed. Next we can mask out the foreground elements by using a mask or the rotoscope tool. However, with the upside down world we placed a black plane behind those foreground elements. This way we can use a light and blending mode and a mask to cut everything out. The reason why we did this is because we have these particles floating around and they have to be in front of our talent. Then last we can key out the green from our talent clip compositing everything together. Now for the next step we warp stabilized everything making the movement of all clips smoother. And once done, your talent is standing in your unreal world. Of course, the upside down doesn't need to be visible all the time, so we animated the opacity of the two layers to flicker in and out. Now to bring everything together we are going to do an overall color grade and add some extra details. Like flares, whatever you want. And then you're done. And this is how you can visit the Upside Down by using Unreal Engine and Adobe After Effects. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you, Holy Land, for the support. I hope you learned something new. And as always, stay creative. Hold on guys before you go because I got some exciting news. Holy Land is actually doing a contest right now called New Ways to Use Video Transmissions. Simply make a video using video transmission and it doesn't even have to be the one from Holy Land. Upload it to the contest and who knows, maybe you can win some awesome prizes. So good luck with that guys.